Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've been your host, Lauren Seiler. On, I'm Lauren Seiler. On this edition, um, today, um, while the guest is coming, uh, we would like to um, focus on All Brains Belong uh, VT. All Brains B Belong Vermont is a, a neuro-inclusive primary care and uh, community organization. And um, we would like to thank our sponsors uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the partnerships of today's program, the partnerships of All Brains Belong Vermont, uh, a neuro-inclusive primary care and community organization. Um, we would also like to thank the um, Association for the Blind Vermont, the Division for the Blind Vermont, and many, many other organizations, also including Higher Ability Vermont. We would like to welcome Dr. Melissa Hauser, Executive Director of All Brains Belong Vermont. Welcome to uh, Able Then On Air. Hello, it's great to be here. Okay, what are the missions and goals of All Brains Belong Vermont? Absolutely. So, so All Brains Belong is a nonprofit 501c3 organization here in Montpelier um, that uses principles of universal design. I'll talk about that in a minute. Universal design to provide health care and community connection. Um, our uh, organization was formed to celebrate neurodiversity, which uh, refers to all of the many ways our brains as humans think, learn, and communicate. We all have different brains that all do these things differently. And um, in order to have a truly inclusive community, um, we need to have um, healthcare, education, community connection offered in different ways so that everyone can access um, all of these things in the way that works best for their brain. What exactly do you mean by, uh, because people learn, like you said, people learn differently. Um, for example, when I was growing up, um, I was in special ed, special education for part of the time, and then the other part of the time I was mainstream, you know, uh, and because they wanted to be inclusive with education. So what exactly do you mean by all-inclusive and pe other people learn differently? So to me, inclusion means that people feel that they belong. 
So in order for people to feel like they belong, um, we need to feel safe and we feel need to feel connected. So um, if there is a default, like a cookie cuttered way that something is offered or expected, if you have the kind of brain that does that thing differently, you're going to feel disconnected. You're going to feel like there's, there's, there's a main way, a default way, and then there's you. So anytime there's a default, everybody else is othered. And when people feel othered, they do not feel included. Mm -hmm. So um, what type of services does All Brain Belong, all, all Brains Belong Vermont provide? We offer primary care. Um, so primary care of infants through older adults with all types of brains. No particular diagnoses are required. Um, we, we, we provide primary care services. And um, coming soon, um, we are also going to be opening up to folks to receive their primary care elsewhere, but are looking for some specific medical support around brain health um, executive functioning and kind of some of the common medical issues that in particular autistic and ADHD folks experience kind of co-occurring medical conditions. Um, for, in addition, for, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. For example, can you, can for, you give me for example, um, so uh, when I, when I, when I use the term neurodivergent, um, that refers to brains that think, learn and communicate differently than like the so-called typical brain, although I'm not sure there really is such a thing as a typical brain, but uh, uh, brains that think, learn, communicate differently than the type of brain that society has deemed a typical brain. So um, uh, these folks, and, and I belong to that community, I am autistic and ADHD, dyspraxic, dyscalculic and dyslexic. Um, so the neurodivergent community is at, um, has higher levels of autoimmune conditions, all kinds of autoimmune conditions that impact the digestive tract, the musculoskeletal system, the rest of the nervous system and the cardiovascular system. Mm -hmm. So auto autoimmune conditions in particular. Um, in addition to our healthcare um, uh, uh, domain, we also offer, offer a range of free community programs that are offered to everybody, um, even those getting their healthcare services elsewhere. So these are uh, weekly community education opportunities and social connection opportunities mm -hmm. that are all free and open to the public. So there is no, uh, there is no, so insurance doesn't pay for these services. So in health insurance pays for the healthcare part. Um, so the, so the healthcare part, we accept Medicaid, Medicare, Blue Cross, MVP and Cigna. So just like any, any, any other, um, uh, primary care practice that participates in insurance. So that's all the usual way, but then the, com the community social and education programs are completely separate from the healthcare. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, go ahead Arlene, did you wanna start with your, uh, your questions? Yes. Uh, uh, go ahead. Do you take children or adults too? Both. Do you yeah. take children and adults? Yeah. Yeah, right. both. So, so babies, infants, so newborns through older adults. So um, babies, toddlers, kids, teens, adults, uh, the whole lifespan. I'm a family physician. So we have two primary care clinicians, myself and Sierra Miller, who is an amazing nurse practitioner. Um, and Sierra and I are both um, family medicine trained. So we take care of patients throughout the whole lifespan. Okay, um, so take me now. Since it, it, so, your your agency is neuro inclusive primary care and community. Um, traumatic brain injury is a big thing, especially myself. I I, I deal with um, um, epilepsy. What are certain services that you might provide people with epilepsy? And we'll start from there. 
Sure. So many of our patients have co-occurring epilepsy. Um, this is this is common in, um, in in the neurodivergent community. So we provide primary care. Um, so this is all of the, um, the the preventive care, staying well, in addition to support around the specific um, uh, things things that people need. Um, if 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 patients also have specialists in the community, we work very closely with them to coordinate their care. Um, but it really it 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 really really depends. Um, so it's about so family medicine is about um, uh, preventing um, uh, um, uh, health complications and supporting people with their current health care needs. Mm -hmm. What makes your agency, uh, All Brains Belong, different than other primary care agencies? What a great question. So um, earlier when I was talking about how anytime there is a default, everyone else who doesn't, whose brain doesn't do the thing the way the default is, is othered. So what neuroinclusive means is that we don't have any default workflows. Um, all of our patients co-create a truly customized experience. What I mean by that is um, there are multiple ways of doing everything. There are multiple ways to make appointments. You don't have to pick up the phone and make an appointment. That is hard for a lot of brains. Is, um, it, you, is it for, for real? Is it real? For real. There is are real? many people who um, the, 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 um, the pressure of initiating a call auditorily processing without the mm -hmm. visual cues to go along with it so you're not able to see the the person's lip moving or the facial expressions or nonverbal cues. You're just having the auditory information come in. That's hard. Or the executive functioning skills required to um, initiate this high pressure task that's really stressful. So um, or staying on hold while like doing all the other things. Anyway, so so it's not just the phone. So you can book your appointments online or by email or by secure text message. Um, when you are scheduling your appointment, you can choose not just um, office appointment versus telemedicine, but we also do outdoor visits because um, actually entering um, a, a, a space is not um, comfortable for all people, particularly those who have a lot of healthcare anxiety and healthcare trauma, which is very, very common. Um, you get to pick your furniture that you're sitting in. Um, you get to pick your lighting, your sound. You get to pick from a range of sensory processing supports or executive functioning supports that work for you. And this is not just people who are asking for certain workarounds to a default. This is all patients are offered this menu. Yeah. of all of the different ways to interact so that they can create an experience that really works for them. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead with your, your other questions. Um, how long has your agency been in existence? How long have you been in existence for? Uh, about six months. We opened in November. Oh, wow. So you're pretty, pretty new. Pretty new. Yeah. yeah. What? Was there a call for the community for different primary care? Is that why you guys exist? Yeah, exactly. So, so I have been a family physician for um, a little bit over 10 years now, and I had developed an interest and experience in supporting neurodivergent kids and adults and often multi-generational families. Mm -hmm. And so one in five people learn, think, or communicate differently than the so-called typical brain. Um, so I was working in the mainstream healthcare system, and I was finding that I was spending most of my time helping people problem solve around accessing their community. Um, so they were feeling excluded within the school systems, within accessing employment and finding employment, keeping employment. Um, people were lonely, disconnected, and really struggling with social connection. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it's and I think a lot of this is because there's so many defaults in our society, like 
This is how you're supposed to interview for a job. This is the way you have to sit in your chair at school. This is the way you have to fill out a 20 page packet to become a new patient. There's just basically and, like, sorry, go ahead. And, and in terms of people with, since my wife and I are huge advocates um, for people with disabilities, one of the biggest things um, some people might be scared also of hiring people with uh, people with special needs because they don't know us. They won't. They don't. They they they're so scared that they won't give us a chance. So right. one of the things that I tell people is if you can't get a job with a an employer, create your own job. So you know some people need to think differently in terms of yeah. That. I'm glad you brought that up. That's actually, so one of our free community programs is called Brain Club. Um, and uh, there's a Brain Club happening today about this very topic. Um, mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's a, the, the, the title of the, the session is called Making Your Work Life Work for Your Brain. Yeah. And it has a, a panel of community members talking about how they've done that. Mm -hmm. um, and I can say, as a person with disabilities, the idea, um, it is uh, really hard to be running this organization. And the way that I make this work is that I, we have a culture of interdependence here where we all are connected with and rely on one another. And so the strengths of my brain, they complement the strengths of all the people on our team's brain so that each of us are um, feeling supported and we can work together to try to shift the community conversation around neurodiversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you, um, I, I saw All Brains Belong at the, the Pride event in Montpelier. Do you provide, does All Brains Belong provide um, specific services for LBGT? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so you know, um, and, and I think we, we may have talked about this when we first chatted at Montpelier Pride, but there's a huge overlap between neurodiversity and gender diversity and sexual orientation diversity. So we have a large group of LGBTQ plus patients um, and we provide gender affirming medical care within the context of our primary care practice. What, um, what is gen gender affirming mean? Yeah, so so um, it, it's 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 going to vary depending on the person, um, but this may this may involve um, let's say uh, hormone medications. This may involve it kind of depends on on the person. So it's really about person centered care and um, and supporting people in in the ways that they're looking for support. Okay, um, so. Um, explain in your, uh, in your, your opinion on, um, the misconceptions. One of the questions I asked, uh, is what are the misconceptions around people with special needs when, you know, people first meet them? Because, you know, um, that, you know, a lot of people were, might be scared and so on. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I think a big misconception about brains in general is that um, the, the message that people get, you know, from early childhood onwards is that there's one right way to be a person. Like there's one right way to play and learn and move and communicate. And when you frame it that way, I think most uh, listeners or viewers would be like, no, that's not true. Yeah, I know that's not true. And yet, um, young kids are getting the message, you know, there's like therapies that are kind of training people to appear in a more neurotypical way. And that is not identity affirming and it can be really traumatic. So I think like one big misconception is that um, like, like <laughs> there's, there's no default brain. And so there's no right way to be a person. So the, I mean, I, I think that if we, we look at some specific misconceptions um, around, let's say, for example, autistic people, um, and, and I, I, I use identity first language because uh, autism is an essential part of my identity. So that's, that's why I use, use that term. So there's misconceptions that autistic people have no empathy, that we don't want connection, that we're not able to perspective take, 
like that's just wrong it's wrong and it's offensive mm. um and 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 so i think that when if 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 we can zoom out and realize that there is no one right way to communicate there's no one right set of social skills or play skills no one right way to learn um i think that is and uh, these are like the prerequisites for a neuro inclusive society mm. talk about uh, uh you know how you came to be as far as why did you decide to go into medicine and um you know despite because we here at Ableton on air we we focus on the abilities of people not necessarily the disabilities um how has medicine changed your life um in terms of changing other people's lives despite your challenge Yeah, it's a great question. So, I have always been really interested and drawn to um like supporting the self-actualization of other people, like the idea of um the self-determinism of, you know, when someone really understands themselves and their own needs and then you can um you you connect with your people and then you're on this path toward you know on your own journey and i even remember as as you know a, a young person like being really interested in that and being really drawn to that and um i i tried to go about it in a number a number of different ways um i have a mental health background i did that for a while um i was a uh, um a, an athletic coach for a while these were like all different ways of supporting people on their journey and when i um i i i medicine was very interesting to me in terms of the science um but in but like what i'm specifically drawn to is the relationships mm -hmm. um and um the 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 the, the unique privilege of being afforded into someone's safe space um and 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 the work of earning that privilege mm -hmm. so that's what that's 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 what brought me to becoming a doctor okay uh any more questions go ahead go ahead oh, okay um we're going to continue uh <clears throat> what uh what are some of the other community events that all brain belong is, is going through right now yeah oh thanks for the question so a big program that we just launched is called kid connections it is a matchmaking program for kids age 3 through 17 it's totally free and essentially um uh kids teens or their support people fill out a profile um of what their interests are and their communication preferences their access needs and make a custom match with another kid who shares those um and so so that's going on brain club i mentioned is our weekly community education series um right now it's thursdays but in july it's going to be shifting i think to tuesdays but you can uh check out the allbrainsbelong.org website um mm -hmm. and uh to 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 see, see the new topics but but we have archives they all get recorded and so archives from the past 6 months worth of brain clubs on all everyday brain life topics from like um sensory processing to uh relationships communication stress management um all kinds of things so this brain club we have a weekly lunch and learn that's free on a variety of topics like tomorrow at noon right now it's thursdays um thursdays at noon a free lunch and learn um it's about neuro inclusive employment mm -hmm. um and uh next week is a parenting topic mm -hmm. um and um and kind of a special interest related events along the way um that that change change month to month um and then we also provide um trainings for individuals and organizations about neurodiversity and inclusion um and um Those are the those 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 are the big categories. Um talk about uh since we have a couple of minutes left. Talk about the trainings and consultations part of your agency. 
Yeah. Um, so this has been, this is, this is one of my favorite things that we do. Um, so organizations, um, of, you know, a range, and I think that, um, uh, it, it's, it's a very good thing that, um, in recent times, organizations have been trying to improve the, um, attention to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and I think that often neurodiversity and disability are missing from those conversations. And in particular, when we think about the intersectionality of all of the different ways in which uh, aspects of our identities are marginalized um, uh, versus um, the privilege afforded by certain intersections of identity, you know, neurodiversity is the missing piece of these conversations. And so, um, you know, uh, different types of businesses from schools to law firm to um, other nonprofits, um, uh, all, all different kinds of sectors have brought have brought us into to to look at neuro inclusive employment, neurodiversity and culture and kind of what does it mean to be neuro inclusive? Mm -hmm. um, OK, so <clears throat> uh, really quick, uh, what are some of the future goals of All Brains Belong since you guys are so new? Yeah. So I like, like and, and in addition to our being governed by a board of directors, we also have a community advisory board um, of community members who help us shape our vision and our work. And um, when we think about how will we know that the community is more neuro inclusive, um, that's how we're going to really be defining our impact. And so when we zoom out, and we really are thinking about um, uh, th this whole business of every time you have a default, everything else is an other. Our vision is that we contribute to a community shift, a paradigm shift about that there's no right way to be a person. And that anytime you have a default, everything else is other. And so um, that, is, that is something that I would just invite um, viewers to, to reflect on in, in your, in your personal life and your professional life, is there one way that something's being offered? And if so, can we introduce some flexibility and some choice? Mm -hmm. Um, okay. For more information on all brains belong, you can go to www.allbrainsbelong.org. That is www.allbrainsbelong.org, allbrainsbelong.org. We would like to thank uh, Dr. Melissa Hauser, Executive Director of uh, All Brains Belong, for joining us on this uh, wonderful edition of Able Then On Air. We would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and so many others for um, taking the time to um, to work with Able Then On Air, including the partnership, the new partnership of All Brains Belong. Uh, I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able Then On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. 
Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Denonair has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Abel Denonair is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.